Hey guys, so as I'm sure many of you are already aware, Linux Mint are retiring the KDE version of their distribution. So they recently put out a post on their blog saying that 18.3 is going to be the last uh, Linux Mint KDE version um, available that they're going to be maintaining. Now they do say that um, it's still going to be perfectly possible to install the KDE desktop on top of uh, a Linux Mint distribution, which you would expect. Um, and they certainly give out their thanks and they explain their reasoning. Now their reasoning in a lot of cases is because of the distribution that they want to build. Now Linux Mint have the you know like they have a canonical distribution which is the linux mint based on ubuntu uh with the cinnamon desktop that is like the uh quintessential linux mint desktop and it seems that they maintain various other versions the lmde linux mint debian edition which is based on uh, i believe it's the latest stable version of uh debian and they also have like for example the mate version and the xfce version as well and these are, of course, uh, available and still going to be uh, brought out on their uh, as part of their reg regular scheduling. So, um, the question that I'd like to bring out, or bring up rather, uh, is how many desktop environments should a distribution run with? Uh, how sh how many should it support? How many should it bring out? Uh, and how should it do it as well? Because this is something that has always perplexed me and a lot of people have often criticised me for having not exactly particularly concrete views on this because I do kind of waver and I do change depending on distribution to distribution. So for example, there are several ways of doing it. You've got the Linux Mint way, which provide, um, they provide Cinnamon and Mate as part of an, uh, you know the official um, desktops in their official capacity in the most official way. And then there's like an XFCE version which I believe is maintained by the community but is generally considered almost on a par with the others. And with Linux Mint they have what are called X apps which are uh, applications that are designed with this degree of a traditional uh, user interface paradigm in mind but um, that are applied across Ubuntu Mate, across Cinnamon, not Ubuntu Mate, just across Mate, across Cinnamon and across XFCE um, so that they provide a degree of consistency even among the various distributions. Um, however, there's also the Ubuntu way of doing it where each uh, desktop environment is in effect uh, a, a separate branch, a separate version of Ubuntu entirely. It's a separate distribution. So you've got Ubuntu which obviously changes their new known desktop up quite a lot and they have a certain philosophy and a certain degree and a certain image uh, and a certain marketing appeal. But then you've got Ubuntu Mate which is not uh, the Mate desktop on top of an Ubuntu base. They also provide the Software Boutique for example which is a fantastic, it's probably the best way of installing software on Linux and it even provides support for things that require pulling down third-party PPAs so you can get the uh, the Skype client and um, a lot of other sort of Electron apps that are brought out. I think there's a, a Slack client. There's all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff in the Software Boutique that isn't part of the Ubuntu uh, base as well. And then you've got distributions like Zubuntu, which is effectively a very um, a, a very standard XFCE desktop on top of um, the Ubuntu base as well. They've done a lot less um, stuff on top of that. They, ha you know, like for example in Ubuntu Mate, they, they've developed a whole new tweak tool as well, so that you can do more with Ubuntu Mate uh, or, or more with the Mate desktop than you could ever do before. Um, so they've often they've treated their various different spins as completely different distributions uh, and then of course you've got budgie which started out with one very strong desktop not budgie solus which started out with a very strong budgie desktop but over time have started bringing out more and more desktops um and one of the reasons why this is, uh, and of course, of course, there's the Antergos way, uh, before I forget that. And Antergos gives you a unified installer. They give you the one installer, and then through the installation process, you get to choose which desktop environment you want to install as part of your um, permanent uh, in installation. And it gives you, it gives you, I think, I think, an option of six, and it gives you, you know, pretty much the broad selection. Um, and they all look reasonably similar. I think some, I would argue, are perhaps better implemented than others. But I think you're always going to get that at the case, as, as the case, because there's only so much time you can sort of add into it. Um, and uh, with the uh, Antergos installer, they give you a screenshot, which is, I suppose is the closest thing you can get to an actual 
um, to providing what you might expect out of the desktop. But each of the desktop environments is a completely different user experience. And if you are, say, new to Linux or new to a distribution or new to a desktop environment, you may not necessarily understand the nuances of what makes a desktop environment a desktop environment. And if you are new to Linux, for example, having to make that decision without having any practical or hands-on knowledge of your Linux distribution that you might be trying out, I would imagine could be quite intimidating and somewhat quite confusing. And if any of you guys are watching that might fall into that sort of newer user category, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, or at least those of you that are new enough to remember having to make that decision. Um, with me, I was perfectly happy just to take the time and try one after the other and to see what, um, what each one offered. But it took me a very long time to actually set down a decision. And to be honest, I'm still, you know, a, a, I'm a swing voter in that particular election, truth be told. Um, for example, uh, Ubuntu Mate might be my favourite variant of Ubuntu, but the Mate desktop arguably is not my favourite desktop of the lot. It's just certainly implemented the best out of all the Ubuntu variants, in my personal opinion. But... Um, but then again, it certainly raised my opinion of the Mate desktop. But when you've got um, distributions, for example, like Linux Mint, which do specifically appeal to maybe the newer user, they've also got a, a specific sort of uh, idea of what they want to provide in mind. Um, it does seem to me that it would make more sense to focus and zero in on this cinnamon desktop based on Ubuntu. Now they do say that they be they they um, have a secondary version of their operating system based on Debian. Uh, as a backup, and they do actually refer to it as if something happens to Ubuntu, then they've got a uh, plan of action for Debian. Um, but we do see that they have had to drop their KDE environment as a result of it just not being able to, partly like not being able to fit in with the um, the operating system and distribution that Linux Mint want to provide. Um, but also, you know, it, it's a lot of additional work. And when uh, Solus, you know, they started out and they had the Sol budgie desktop and that was the one thing you had and it made that decision for you. It felt very comfortable in a way because it gave you a very direct route. Um, but now that they've started adding in the Mate desktop, and I thought the Mate desktop adding that in wasn't too much uh, of a complication there because people who knew the Mate desktop would have that option to opt for it and it was a bit more um, familiar with people who were more familiar with the Linux space and how Linux worked as well. And they would still have, you know, Budgie as their primary desktop with Mate being a secondary option for those that perhaps didn't get on with it. But now they've brought out the GNOME desktop, and uh, many of you guys down in the comment section have told me that that's actually a really good desktop, and I've heard uh, through the grapevine that they're hoping to bring out a KDE Plasma desktop. Again, this uh, this um, it's a lot of work, and um, you know, you never really know sort of uh, how sustainable it is in the long run, and whether or not it will build a community that will ultimately be disappointed sometime down the line. Of course, the Linux Mint, uh, in fact, Linux Mint, if my memory serves me correctly, going all the way back to Linux Mint version 1, which I think was called Ada, for obvious reasons, um, might even have been based on KDE, and it's just sort of evolved over time, so it wasn't necessarily like they were taking on board a new project there. But then you've got something like Pop! OS. Now, Pop! OS is definitely designed for newcomers to Linux. And it is very much a distribution and a desktop that's defined by what's not there rather than by what's there. Some of you guys have sort of wondered why I praise Pop! for being so intuitive and user-friendly, while at the same time having mixed feelings about um, the vanilla Ubuntu because... Um, it's ver they're very similar distributions. And I think a lot of it just comes down to the fact with on Ubuntu, there are multiple ways of doing basic things, which I feel can throw off a lot of users and not feel particularly intuitive. Most notably, how the applications seem to spring up as well. Um, it doesn't seem to, to work with any degree of rhyme or reason. It just seems like a button just happens to be there. It might even feel a little bit more comfortable if the uh, applications button was up where the Ubuntu button used to be, right up in the top left. And it might feel like at least the top left-hand corner would have a bit of... Um, uh, you know, a bit of a, co uh, you know, it would be that coherent corner where you would, um, your applications corner, it would be, you know, it would be the, the place where your mouse would instinctively move to. But it, it seems like the, you know, the buttons are spread out across the desktop in a way that doesn't necessarily have too much of a rhyme or reason. Whereas with Pop! OS, even though it's a lot closer to, to true GNOME in many ways, uh, obviously barring the theme, um, it, it has a very singular way of doing things, a very unified way of doing things, and 
because there are fewer ways, you know, fewer options and fewer ways to get to, you know, fewer paths to take, as it were. It seems that it's just a little bit more straightforward, and I suppose similar to a to a mobile's user interface. And I think it's a good demonstration of how just very small tweaks to the to the UI can actually have a significant difference on how the flow of a desktop environment feels. Truth be told, there's nothing to say that you couldn't customize Ubuntu to have that set feel, but with Pop OS, and I think even to a degree, so does Ubuntu. The out of the box impression is, um, you know, it's it's significantly noteworthy. Whereas, for example, with Arch Linux, because it's designed to be custom built pretty much from from the command line up, uh, you don't tend to to take those into account because with Arch Linux, you're expected to either have the expertise or be willing to follow the manual in such detail that you would make all of those decisions yourself. Arch Linux is not a distribution for people who are new to Linux. It's for people who are comfortable with Linux and want a custom bespoke distribution. So uh, I suppose where my, um, and I think this is where with, with Unity, it's uh, with you, not Unity, with Ubuntu, um, I, I feel that it definitely seems a little bit scattered in terms of who it's aiming for, because even though they've given a lot of thought to the out of the box experience, um, it just doesn't feel as intuitive as Pop OS. Um, so um, and and with Pop OS is actually quite interesting because even though they've given you the one de uh, desktop environment where you you know you don't steer wrong, um, they've also uh, made it so that you can download uh, either the Nvidia drivers or the AMD slash Intel drivers right from the off. So that even to me at least it looks like it's even a, a lot more. Uh, user friendly in that regard, rather than having to fire up the machine and you know at some point asking, oh, you've got additional drivers that you might want to install. Like just having that from the off, in a very similar way to how Manjaro uh, bundled the free and non-free graphics drivers in their their boot menu was also I found particularly user friendly. But Pop OS, I think, have possibly given the most amount of thought to the smoothest possible um, installation and, and setup. So I certainly uh, give them credit where credit's due there. And um, it's very obvious that they've just given the one desktop environment because that's the one uh, that they want you to go with. If you are a more advanced user or if you want something of a higher degree of customizability, there are distributions out there more suited to your needs. Whereas I guess you could argue that with Ubuntu, even though to me it's not necessarily clear what kind of market that they're aiming for, it might not necessarily be a user-friendly uh, new to Linux market anymore. It might be uh, that it's just looking for maybe the developer market, or maybe it's just a, a standard Linux user market. Um, maybe, again, they're working out what their market is uh, so that they could possibly um, nail down the rough edges, nail down the rough edges, sand down the rough edges uh, come the long term support release. And again, you know, credit on Ubuntu's part for actually bringing out this release six months uh, earlier than they had to because it allows them to get these little UI changes uh, fixed if indeed they decide that they want to. So um, my my thoughts around the idea of, of how many desktop environments should uh, like a, a should we uh, should a uh, should a distribution really come with or supply depends, I suppose, greatly on uh, what kind of user base it's targeting. I suppose if you're looking for for, for a new user uh, or, or a user that just wants a standard hassle-free experience and isn't really interested in customizability, and that's not necessarily just a new user as well. I mean, it, it's just someone that doesn't want a customized system, someone that just wants something to that, that, that they can install and go. Um, then I, I think that there is space for a lot of um, desktop environment, uh, a lot of distributions to actually just supply one desktop environment, but polish it uh, so that, you know, get out every single bug, get out, you know, make sure that the, the beginning to end user experience is as polished and refined as possible with as few, fewer things potentially to go wrong, rather than offer as much customizability as possible. I suppose the question that I'm trying to ham-handedly raise is how much choice in the uh, desktop environment department do you offer the end user before it becomes either arbitrary or too difficult to support everyone's tastes? So there might be a good argument for suggesting that there are a you know a handful of desktop environments offered to the end user, but there does come a point be be before it gets particularly difficult to support all of those, especially if your distribution has a particular end goal in mind, or depending on the size of your community as well. 
So obviously, if you're new to Linux um, and new to you know, and you're, or you're not particularly interested in any uh, element of customizability or any grand degree of customizability, then having your desktop environment dis uh, chosen for you might um, be beneficial, especially if it means the entire team of that distribution can focus on that one. Uh, desktop environment and make it as polished and user friendly and you know and, and, and as good a end user experience as possible but on the other hand you know you can offer up a selection which would allow uh, a lot of personal choice and allow a lot of customizability and if I'm completely honest, in the spirit of the Linux community lies the heart of, of customizability. It's, a lot of us choose Linux because it gives us choice. It gives us freedom of choice. It gives us the ability to build the operating system that we want. And many of us have come over from Windows or from Mac uh, seeking a degree of uh, choice and seeking a degree of customization that was lacking on those platforms. And we came over to Linux for that reason in many cases, or at least in part. So I think as well as just offering up a choice of dis uh, desktop environments or not, um, how they're presented and the benefits that they're offered and the problems that they're solving also come into play here as well. So uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it and, and whether or not there is a good way of doing this or, or a bad way, or whether or not it's dependent on the distribution in question. So for example, like I said with Arch, you know, you have the full range of desktop selections because you install them yourself from the command line and that's expected and you're expected to know the nuances. Whereas with Pop! OS, which I guess you could say is the opposite end of the customizability spectrum, that decision is made for you because um, a lot of people who might be use picking up Linux for the first time might not understand or even appreciate the nuances between the desktop environments and would just rather something that they could pick up and use and go. I've got to say, on a personal note, I don't mind too much what my desktop environment is. Yes, I certainly have preferences of one over the other, but when it comes to choosing the desktop environment, I personally choose the one that's the flagship desktop environment for the distribution that I'm running because it's usually the one that offers up fewest fewest problems it's the one that the extra bits you know bits and pieces the extra support the special distro specific um, applications tend to be written for and bug tested on the most and does tend to offer in general the smoothest user experience for example, Manjaro is their flagship desktop environment, use XFCE, and that is a fantastic XFCE experience. But there certainly are other distributions that don't take the effort that Manjaro have to uh, customize the XFCE build to the strengths of that particular distribution. So it's certainly um, a complex minefield to navigate and certainly one that I don't have the answer to. But I do think that there's some degree in uh, the who the distribution is aimed towards, whether or not it's new users and users that favor customizability. But also there are uh, probably better ways than others of presenting the desktop environment. Um, and of course, with, for example, the Ubuntu way of doing things, each desktop environment is presented as an entirely different um, distribution. But then in a lot of cases, that dis those distributions are, um, uh, they're solving different problems possibly even than the vanilla Ubuntu distribution itself. So it certainly is complex. There's a lot of nuances there. There's differing degrees of customizability and what the end users want. And of course, uh, lots of different communities and sub-communities of the Linux ecosystem to satisfy there as well. Um, but I suppose in a lot of cases, if you just offer up, you go, here's my distribution. You can either have the GNOME desktop, the KDE desktop, or the Mate desktop, the Cinnamon desktop and you just leave it at that, there's going to be a lot of people that might not necessarily appreciate the nuances between them and the problems that each of those desktop environments are trying to solve or how they're trying to solve them. So I guess there is also a degree of presentation as well. Anyway, those are just a few idle rambling thoughts I had on that. I know some of you guys have, have asked me and quizzed me about that kind of stuff before. So when it comes to various different distributions offering up various different desktop environments and if and when they should, it's uh, certainly uh, a bit of a conundrum and certainly one that I'm not entirely sure on myself. I certainly know that the uh, the end user or the end user that the distribution has in mind should play a significant factor into it and how customizable a distribution aims to be is again another factor. Um, but also I think the amount of work and the end result is also something that should be considered. But um, a lot of you guys have asked me about this over the years because my opinion does seem to be somewhat inconsistent and well I've got to say it, 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 it 
kind of is because it is just such a minefield to navigate with so many different nuances. I certainly sort of err on the side of um, distributions designed for newcomers to Linux to um, have as little arbitrary choice as possible, although many of you, of course, would argue that a choice of desktop environments isn't then arbitrary. But um, to make that decision, you may want to be a little bit more familiar with the desktop environment, the, you know, one desktop environment before considering moving to another. So, like I say, it's um, it's a conundrum. It's a conundrum. So anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I ideally would appreciate your thoughts on this in the comments section below, considering it's just such a subjective area. And um, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.